For this build, I'm going to be using the Enviolo Sportive Hub. Unfortunately at the moment they are really difficult to get hold of, so I've had to go for the 36 spoke hole version. And most road bike rims will have 32 or less. This one has 32 and it has an ERD effective rim diameter of 596. With the help of this scale drawing, I've been able to work out that I can miss out these two spoke holes here. And this drawing is for one hub flange only. The other side will be the same, but just rotated round by one spoke hole. And it looks like I can get away with two different spoke lengths. And that's really because it's a one cross pattern, and so the position of these holes is not as critical. It doesn't affect the spoke length as much as a two or three cross pattern. So the two spoke lengths I'm going to use for this, and they will be plus or minus two millimetres of the exact length according to this drawing, and they're going to be 240 and 244. I've already built a wheel with a different rim and some used spokes of one length only, and it actually worked, although it was really testing the limits of the thread lengths. So I've got the two different lengths here, and let's see if we can build it. So I've decided to go for this non-touching pattern, um, simply because I just don't really like the look of, of this, it just looks wrong really. Although it does mean the spokes actually touch each other. So I'm going go, to go for this one, just because it looks better. So I rather quickly realised as I was beginning to build this that it's going to be a bit more tricky than a standard rear wheel because although a standard rear wheel would have two different spoke lengths they're normally one length for each flange not all mixed up like this one is. But what I'm going to do is put all the short ones which are these are all going to go up through the holes and all the long ones are going to go down through the holes. And that should keep it kind of organised and easy to, to do and then you just need to replicate it on the other side but flipped over and round by one hole. That's all the spokes just loosely in place at the moment hopefully all with the right cross pattern and so on. So I've uh, begun to, to get some tension onto all the spokes and I've come across a little bit of an issue with the lengths so my theory that you could get plus and minus two well isn't strictly untrue but uh, the minus two is an absolute limit um, these three spokes here are all lined up so the spoke ends are in line with this 10 centimeters and um, this center one is wound on by the correct amount this one here is wound on by eight turns so it should be enough for it to grip but as you can see you're getting up to four millimeters of extra length Whereas this one here is wound on as far as it will go and you're barely getting two millimetres and that's an absolute limit. So what I'm going to have to do is pack it out a bit with some washers because I don't feel like ordering up more spokes. And if I was going to do this again I would definitely order the spokes at least a millimetre shorter if not uh, two. So I've made these washers here, they're about two millimeters thick and I actually only need eight of them for the shortest spokes and I've also found these copper washers as well which are about 0.3 millimeters thick. In the end I had to make another eight washers for the other spokes which needed to be two millimeters shorter but uh, I've now got it to a state where I think I'm going to get away with this one so I now need to get the rim centered between the two axles and for that I put the axle adapters in and one thing to note about this model of hub the MBLO Sportive and Cargo which have these CNC routed out pockets here is that the hub flanges are slightly shifted over towards the non-drive side so I can check that it's about right with this yeah, it just about catches on the end of the axle and should be the same on the other side if I got it right just barely. So that's 
now good enough to be able to move on to getting the wheel round and trued up, running true. And for that it needs to go into a stand. Or an old bike frame like this will do just as well and a scrap of plastic to act like a marker. The uh, wheel is now reasonably true and the spokes are reasonably well tensioned so I can recheck that the rim is centered as it can be. And then that means I can decide if it's a tiny bit off. When I do the final truing I can pull it in that direction. So it looks like it needs to be pulled towards the drive side, just a tiny bit. So it means if it's out of true, I'll pull it that way instead of the other way. This should be uh, good enough for the moment. I'm not sure how the washers will behave under use. Uh, they may bed in a bit, so I may have to re-straighten this wheel at some point in the future. But uh, that should be good enough for the moment. That's the wheel now finished. I'm not sure where I went wrong with the measurements, but if I'd used spokes 2mm shorter, this would have been a much easier build. So if you intend to build one like this with a spoke pattern, the 36 hole hub, the 32 hole rim, and assuming the rim has a diameter of 596, you're going to need 16 spokes that are 238 and 16 that are 242. So next is to fit this to the bike and for that I'm going to need to remake this no turn washer to engage with the disc brake because this particular one doesn't work with these axle adapters. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching.